Hey, hello and welcome to this new tutorial by Flowmotion. Today we are going to take a look at the very famous glitch effect, which is really popular these days. So let's just make this quick and dirty and let's jump directly into After Effects. So in here let's directly build all of this from scratch. So let's quickly think about what we want to do. We want to create a glitch transition. So we want to start with the first text and end on the second text. So let's directly create two compositions, composition 1 and composition 2. And later on we can put whatever we want inside of those compositions and the transition will go from 1 to 2. So let's directly do this. New composition, we call it composition 1. All the default settings will be fine. And I'm simply duplicating this here. Now let's go into composition 01. And for the sake of this, let's just call it 01. Then we click on align and align it to the middle. Then we just copy the text, go into 2, paste it in here, double click on the text and call this one 2. Okay, so now we can get started. And let me tell you something, I'm not going to show you the standard glitch effect workflow because there's a million tutorials on that on YouTube already where you just distort your text horizontally and vertically. I'm going to show you my way. And this is with a really special effect and I don't think that you have guessed it. It is the card wipe effect. So let's quickly create a new composition, call it our main and let's bring out a red solid just to see what the card wipe is doing. So I hit control Y to get a new composition. Let's make it red, hit OK and apply the card wipe to it. And let's quickly go through the settings here. We have a transition completion. So we want to start on the first text, set a keyframe and then go forward until the transition is completed and we will see the second text here. And therefore you see there are a lot of cards that build up the transition and you can choose how many you want with rows and columns. And the transition width, as the name is telling you, it defines the width of the transition. Okay, so this is what we want to work with. And then also while the transition is happening, we want to keyframe the position. So let's maybe just take four rows, four columns, go to 50% completion. And now we can offset the X amount, which is horizontally and the Y amount, which is vertical. And you can also go into the Z direction. So really cool. And this is exactly what we are going to do now. So I'm just deleting this layer bring out both of our compositions, one and two, and apply the card wipe to one. And for the back layer, so the back of the card, we wanna have the two. Okay, so at first we wanna stretch out everything horizontally. Therefore, let's just create way more rows than columns. And as I told you, we wanna set some keyframes. So at one second, let's go to zero, and a second later, at the two second mark, we go to 100. And then we just go one second further, hit N for end, right click on it and trim comp to work area. Now the work area is just three seconds long and let's just preview this in half resolution. So this is what we have so far. So now we can hit U to get all the properties. And as I told you, we wanna go to the positions jitter and we wanna stretch it out vertically. Let's create a keyframe with zero amount and at the end, Again, we create another keyframe also with zero and in the middle, let's crank this up. And now as we see the effect, we can also play with the transition width. And this is what we have so far. Already looking pretty nice, but to give it just a little bit more randomness, we go into timing randomness and just crank it up. Really cool. So now let's just make all of those keyframes easy ease keyframes. Therefore we select all of them, right click on them, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And this is basically the whole idea of this effect. And now we're just going to create two more copies of that, one with even thinner lines and one with vertical lines. But before we do that, let's directly start with tweaking some of the colors. And therefore we take the fill effect. And I wanna go for like a neon color look. Here's a really cool tip. Go to window, extensions, color themes. And there you find a lot of color schemes that you can modify, but you can also explore them. And let's just check out the most popular ones and kind of like this one here. So I just click 
on the color theme 16 here on the name and there I have all my colors. So let's just dock this in between here. And now we bring out the fill effect and I bring it before the card wipe because the card wipe also has some variations to it. You see some of them are brighter, some of them are darker because they are actually in 3D space and you can also add a light to it. So when I fill it now with red, you can see I have bright red and darker red and when I bring the fill behind it, everything has the same red color. So let's just bring it before the card wipe effect. And now we just choose one of those colors. And we do the same thing. We can copy the fill effect and apply it to our two. And you see, nothing has happened. And this is because we have to set it here. The back layer, we don't want to use the source of the back layer, but we want to have it with the effects applied. There we have it. Of course, we want to have one of these other cool colors here. Really nice. So now, as I told you, we want to duplicate this and I'm just going to solo this. And now let's just make more rows so they get thinner and I can also scale this down, which will also make this really, really small. And then I can go into position jitter, go to my keyframe here and just increase it. And I can also play with all the other settings, flip the axis, random directions. So just feel free to play with all of those settings and see what they are doing. And of course, we're going to change the colors here. Therefore, I'm also duplicating the second layer. So here I need to select layer three now. And now I can just change the color here. So looking really, really nice already. But now let's just duplicate this once more. Also the second layer can directly work on the colors here. And this time, as I told you, we want to tweak something on the keyframes. We don't want to have the X jitter, but we want to have it on the Y axis. So let's create two keyframes with the zero amount and in the middle, we just crank it up. To work a little more on this axis, let's just switch rows and columns. So we go down with the rows and crank up the columns this time. Perfect, maybe we also tweak some of the other settings here. And now let's see all of this in combination. And I like the yellow colors, so I just bring that layer to the top. And this already is a really, really cool effect. So I'm just showing you two more things. Of course, you could always just create more compositions, maybe even go into the Z direction. And of course, make all of these keyframes, easy ease keyframes. And what I don't like is that the two is not that bright and colorful. So I'm going to change a different color for that one. And as you see, the back layer here is layer six. So let's just go into layer six. Yes, already looking way better. So let's just create a nice background for all of this. So I'm just hitting control Y and I'm taking one of those colors here. And to give it some depth, I'm just adding a vignette effect to that layer. And I'm just going up with the amount. So it's really, really black and also work on the angle here and also going down with the transparency like a lot. And by the way, you could do the same thing with just adding a gradient ramp to your layer and then set it to radial ramp, choose the dark color. And then I'm just choosing the same color again, clicking on it and just make this one darker. Now I can work with those two points here to also get the effect that I want. Yes, this is looking pretty nice. And now I'm going to apply a glow to all of this to bring all of this together. And what I normally do is I do this two times. One glow is, as you see, just to pick some of those colors, bring down the intensity just a little bit. And then I'm duplicating the effect, increase the intensity, bring down the threshold so that it almost picks each color and then just increase the radius like really a lot. At first you think, okay, that's too much. But if you go further, you will see now your whole image starts glowing. Now you can just go back with the intensity. So this is with, and it will of course glow with your color. And again, feel free to tweak that as you like. And as a last step, what you could do, and as I told you, this is just a recommendation, add in an other adjustment layer. This time I'll bring it beneath the glow so that later on what this adjustment layer does will get picked up by the glow. And I'm just typing in pixel motion blur. And this will create a fake motion blur. You see without and with. This will do two things here. 
First, it will of course add motion blur, but as there's so much chaos going on, this will really help to sell the glitch, which is exactly what we want. And you get more of those distorting images, the higher your shutter angle is. And normally you want to increase the shutter samples, which will also slow down the render, but this is how it works. But if you lower it, you get like more of those glitches, basically. So I have it at four now, and if I click on this camera, it will create a snapshot. Now I can click on 16 again, and now you see the before and after. So a really nice way to create some extra glitches. For example, this strange thing over here, and this will really, really, really work perfect. Just call this the pixel motion blur, PMB. So we are done, but in other words, we could just add one extra step, and this is like small scan lines, so that this looks more like a TV distortion. Because this is pretty common in all the other glitches too, so I'm quickly going to show you how you could do that. I haven't actually done that on my version, but hey, let's just try if, how this looks. So let's create a new layer, uh, make it black, also bring it beneath the glow, search for the effect called Venetian Blinds. And this normally also is a transition. So when I go from 0 to 100, you see it opens up those blinds. So let's just set this to 50 and the direction is 90 degrees because scan lines on a TV screen are in that order and now we can just play with the width. Okay, now you can barely see it, so maybe let's make this like four, maybe feather this a little bit and then just look for a nice blending mode. And by quickly playing with this, I found that the classic color burn with just like 16% opacity really gives me a nice look. So really nice. And remember what I told you in the beginning, we can still go back into our compositions and just change the text or add an image. So for the sake of it, let's just hide this, create a star. And back in our main composition, everything will update. And while I'm watching this, let's just create another adjustment layer and add the crop effect to it, because this will make us focus even more on the star. Delete the crop right and crop left because we only want to have the top and about 10% should be fine. And now we have some letter boxes. And now let's play this back. And if you like what you've seen so far, then just feel free to click on that subscribe button because the more subscribers I have, the more tutorials like this I can do for you and I really love doing those. And for now, I really hope that you learned something that you will also start thinking outside the box so what is an effect actually doing and how could you achieve the effect in a different way. Start experimenting, use different colors, use different settings, use as many copies of the effect as you like to create even more detail, there are more even better effects. And so for now I wish you a lot of fun with the card wide effect in After Effects.